Hey guys, so I'm going to be showing you in this video how to share code between your React and your React Native applications. Now we're going to be using Yarn Workspaces and we're going to be using this Medium article as a guideline of how to do it. I'll link it below and this kind of works, it kind of doesn't. I wasn't able to get it to work exactly like it recommends, so I'm going to show you what I had to change to get it to work. All right, but to begin, I already have it complete, but I'm going to walk you through the steps and then what I had to change and whatnot. So the first thing I did was create an empty folder. Um, I called mine Peanut. And the next thing I did was create both of my React Native and my uh, React projects. So I did create React Native app, um, and then I uh, did app. And by the way, if you do not have this, you can install it globally um, with npm install create react native app I believe and then the same thing with create react um, app so you can run both of those because we're gonna do create react app as well and I call it web so I ran both of these commands and that created me two folders an app and a folder called web now you don't want to set up your yarn workspace until you have created both of these because it actually does not work when you have uh, yarn workspaces up for whatever reason, the CLI is broken uh, when running within a, a workspace. So the next thing is I set up the package.json file. So I said private is true, workspaces, and I'm going to put everything in a folder called packages slash star. So I made a folder called packages. So if you do ls, we can see packages. And then I moved both of my web. So move web into packages, and then I also moved app into packages as well. So I had both of my web and my app um, projects and packages. And then also inside of packages, I created a, a folder called common. Now uh, in that, I have a very simple package.json. I named it peanut slash common. Um, and then another important part is the main. So this is where the main code is. It's in index.js. Um, and we can see in my index.js, I'm just exporting an add function. So this is a function that I'm going to share between both the React Native and the React app. Now, of course, you can put any kind of JavaScript code that you want here as well for your own project. You can also install dependencies for this common um, that they both use and whatnot. All right, so we have those three. Now, the first thing is being able to use this function in the React app, which is actually not too bad. It's actually pretty simple. So for that, um, the guide recommends, and you can just follow the exact guide for uh, the web. That works all good. So you install two dependencies. This one right here, the React App Rewire and the React App Rewired, um, and then the Yarn Workspaces thing. So just do Yarn Add Dev, um, and then React App Rewired and the whatnot. Now make sure when you do do that though, you're inside of the web directory. Um, and then once you install those dependencies, uh, you can uh, basically switch out your scripts. So your scripts now use React App Rewired um, in all of them. The next thing is uh, you add a file called config-overrides. So we can see if I do an ls, I have config-overrides. And inside of that, yeah, you put this thing right here. Basically what this is doing is modifying the default Webpack configuration for Create React App um, and making it work with Yarn workspaces. And then when I do that, um, it works. So in my web, I didn't change anything except for the uh, app.js inside of uh, web. And for that, I imported add from app peanut slash common. And then I called my add function and I ran that and it worked. So we can see, in fact, I do get three. So that is how you get create react app to be able to import a function that's kind of like a common function. Um, across. Now to do this with React Native it actually is a lot harder. Um, I'm not sure why just their infrastructure I guess is newer and whatnot. So we'll go, that's where I had some problems setting this up and we'll go through uh, that. And we're gonna kind of go through this tutorial um, but change things at the end because I could not get some things to work. So let's scroll down to native. So first things first is they set up this CRNA entry file. So this is the part that didn't work for me. Maybe you want to try this and see if it works for you. Um, but when I did this, it had trouble um, recognizing that this 
CNR entry file existed. Basically, my React Native would just ignore it and use a different one, and it would just straight break. So uh, had to just forget about this whole method right here of using it. So I skipped that part. Um, and what I did instead was everything else after this. And then I had to do a quick fix, which I'll show you. So in my app.json, I added these things. So ignore node modules validation and the packager options. So that's in uh, the app.json, so I added that. And then I kept a newer SDK version. Um, I copied this yarn add command, did exactly that. Um, and then I added this to the, R I created a file called rnclconfig.js and put this in there. So CLI config, and then I had to do a quick tweak to it. So I had uh, added the path module. That way I could get the node modules directory. So by default, this assumes that your node module directory is one directory up. But if we go one directory up from uh, app, we go into the packages folder, and there's really nothing in packages. There's no node modules in that. So we need to go two directories up. So to specify that for this, you uh, there's an option that you pass in the node modules um, and then you just do path.join the current directory and then go up two directories because that is where our node modules is um, at least our yarn workspace node modules um, next thing is setting up this link workspaces so if we copy that um, just creating a file called link workspaces and pasting that in so here's my link workspaces um, paste that in what this is doing is actually going to take uh, create react uh, or not create react react native and expo and put it in your node modules so if I head over to my app if we do an ls on node modules um, I guess I guess I currently don't have it uh, in there I guess it might have I might have wiped it and crashed it we'll go over that in a second though and then we add this thing called pre-start node link workspaces so this is a script that you add to package.json and the name is important here. So they call it pre-start and so what happens is every time that I run npm start or yarn start, um, it's gonna run this, but before it does, it's gonna run this. So what this link workspaces does is it makes a sim link um, inside of the node modules folder and we can just run it real quick. So yarn, pre-start so you saw that I had nothing here I'll show you so I have nothing currently in node modules right um, so when I call yarn pre-start what it does is it sim links things so now I have a expo and a react native sim link um, and what this does is it links it from your yarn workspace node modules expo and react native need to be here to work so we had to move them there but you don't have to actually run this command yarn pre-start Whenever you do yarn start, it'll go ahead and handle that for you. Um, and then after that, um, I don't remember what else was after that. Uh, okay, so yeah, after that you just run the app. Um, the other important part with that was to delete the yarn lock and kill the node modules um, and make sure to do a yarn install uh, when you do this. Uh, I forgot to mention also with the website um, let's see, in package.json I added the dependency peanut common 1.0 and then I did yarn uh, install to install this. So make sure you add that. And I did the same thing for the app. So package.json, uh, there we go. Oh, I added it as a dev dependency. You're going to want to add that as a regular dependency though. Let's go ahead and move that. Um, Okay, and then the last thing is when you actually go to run this, you're going to have a problem since we did not do the first part, which was up here, and that was creating this entry file. So you can try doing this, and what you do is you point create, create React Native app to use this entry file, um, but it would not listen to me when I try to do it. And so the problem that's going to happen now is it's going to look for an app.js file um, in the root directory instead of your app directory. So what I went ahead and did is just put an app inside of the main directory that points to my uh, packages app app. So it actually just grabs this app over here. And that seems to work. 
I'm not sure if this will cause any problems later, but it in fact works okay now. So the app.js I have in my root directory goes inside of packages, inside of app, and then it just renders this app.js. And so I would just put the rest of my app.js in here uh, and then extend the app from here. And then again, I just import add from the common and then I do add and it does work. It does render three. So yeah, so that is how you do it. Now you're probably asking, why would I ever want to do this? This seems super complex to try to get to work with React Native. Um, so yes, it is kind of annoying to set up. I'm not gonna lie, um, and I wish it was not. I wish it was smoother, but it's kind of the best way to share the code between React Native and React, and you get a huge boom um, between the two uh, using them together. Uh, you just don't have to rewrite a lot of your code, at least uh, what I think of as the controller code, which I'll be showing in my next series, um, how the sharing of code works. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do next is how to do the same thing uh, with TypeScript.